first lockdown started, my dreams about retiring young and travelling and going and living in Thailand or maybe going to live in Spain, it all started, that's what I did during lockdown. I, I really enjoyed lockdown because my imagination was everywhere and I was looking at, started off looking at Thailand again and I thought, oh, I just it's just too much. Thailand is so extreme in so many ways, but I love the place, I love everything about it, love the people especially. But then I, I, I got on to looking at Turkey and I actually went to Turkey for a week between the two big lockdowns and realised I wouldn't like to live in Turkey and when I came back I then started to look at Spain. I thought Spain was out of my reach financially. I thought it was maybe a bit too expensive and started to realise that actually it's it's not. It's still um, cheaper than the UK, that's for sure. And then the whole motorhome thing happened and I decided to do that instead. And I always said to my family I was going to do that buy the sell my home which <laughs> it's all massive it's crazy when you think about it sell my home and buy the van and, and go traveling and if I enjoyed it I would keep doing it for as long as I have wanted to do it um, but I always had it in my head that, that if that didn't work out I'm the sort of person I'm, I'm not gonna be too embarrassed about coming back home it's something that it's not a failure it's something I tried to do and something I think I'll do again but in a different way at some point but while I was, I was once it sort of decided, I, I, I was gonna go back. I started to look at Spain again, and, and my biggest worry has always been if, if I go somewhere like Spain, that the heat would be too much for me. I like the sun, I like nice weather, but I don't like boiling weather, which is the number one reason why Thailand's such a problem. I decided in Spain, sold the van. I've now done this. I'm enjoying myself, I don't think I want to stay forever, that's the honest truth at the minute. Things can always change and I have been looking at Thailand again. But the thing that made me make the big decision to actually go ahead and do it, I've mentioned before and a couple of people asked me to tell them a bit more about it because I've talked about my accident in Thailand and how that changed my mindset or fixed my mindset. I've went from somebody that was always very worried about doing things right, not worried about what people thought, where all that sort of thing, to um, stop worrying about small things as much as I possibly can and that mindset has, has, has led me to doing this and it was caused mainly by the accident. So I nearly died and it was a stupid accident, I was in a swimming pool, I was on my own, there was nobody else there. Um, I was having a great time, I was in Pattaya, a nice hotel, um, so only, I think it was only my second day and I slid and there was a wall with a corner sticking out and I slid into it and, and into the water and oh it was sore, winded myself, one of those things you know and get out of the water and oh after a while it started to ease off but that night the pain came back and, it, and then it became horrendous and then I ended up with an ambulance and getting charged around the country. I was brought there really nice. I have had insurance with AXA who by the way I would never use AXA in my life again because of what they did on me. I was the next day then brought into this wonderful modern private hospital and they took me in and they were starting to deal with me and they asked for my insurance details and don't you worry about it we'll go and deal with that but then throughout that day the, the girl who was dealing with it kept coming back saying it was she's great English you know it's just this problem they, they, they're, they're asking for all sorts of information that, and if I, I tried to talk to them I was in excruciating pain and I ended up talking to the guy on the phone and I could hardly talk and he kept saying I can't understand how you hurt yourself and I explained it to him over and over and over and I said, I mean, what, what is this about? I've fallen, he says, you can't hurt yourself in a corner. And in 600 meters at the roundabout, take the second exit and stay on CV 91. You can't hurt yourself in a corner. And, and last, he, he, he sounded like he was um, either Finnish or Swedish or something like that. And I couldn't believe it. It was like he was trying, I realized he was trying to like, get off with helping me. And I said to him, listen, I'm insured, I fell, my 
chest under the ribs within the corner of a wall and I've done damage of some sort and I'm in agony and anyway I give the phone back to the girl well after about an hour the girl came back and said we well, haven't got it settled and I said what, what are my choices and she says well you would have to pay for your treatment and try and claim it back so you'd have to pay for it yourself and try and claim it back because they're not agreeing at the moment or she says you could go to another hospital which is a public hospital and I said how much would it cost and she says well I don't know but we need to do a CT scan and that would be I think it was four thousand pounds like something really crazy I can't really remember but it was a massive amount of money and I said I don't even have that to pay never mind whatever treatment has to be done she says you can go to a public we'll give you an ambulance send you in an ambulance you can go to a public and it'll be a lot cheaper and I had no choice and I got into this ambulance they sent a nurse which was very nice of them but the ambulance driver had a friend with him and drove like a madman this is tired <laughs> oh I thought he was going to get us killed and get over bumps and I was in excruciating pain and we drove about 30 or 40 miles inland into this hospital which was oh my god you should have seen it dire dark dingy and oh god, there's a ton of stories I can tell you that happened over the the few days that I was there but I got brought into the emergency and there were all these very young doctors and very young nurses and although the place was dingy they weren't they were immaculate and very busy and very helpful and they were coming up every one of the doctors was over at me and so then I was brought into the ward and, and it was you know it was very very dark everything looked old especially the people that were in all the beds lots of old men and their backs it's tough and I'm in excruciating pain pain like I've never been in before in my life pain that I, I thought I kept thought of thinking I was going to faint I was so sore and I said to them the morphine isn't working but I think they buy their morphine cheap in China or something it didn't work and whatever they then gave me it, it, it worked but I don't know if I fell asleep or whatever but all of a sudden I imagined as I now know I was in danger and I started to hallucinate and was frightened out of my wits and this went on and on and on and I thought people were coming to get me and then I, I figured out a whole plot, world plot that went on with um, ISIS and it had all accumulated in they come into the, the hospital to cut my head off and the hospital was full of them and they were all around me and I wouldn't look my eyes and I actually got to the point where I said goodbye to my mum and my dad in my head and I sort of accepted that I was about to die which was just crazy and right down to the point where I thought he was cutting my head off and then I fell asleep again and woke up and realised that everything was okay oh mad, absolutely mad and to cut a long story short they, they did a CAT scan or CT scan or whatever it is and the oldest scanner you've ever seen in your life they waited me out onto the street and across the road in the traffic to get this scan in another building and after an hour or or whatever it was a doctor came in and says I will have to do the operation she says so we think you burst your appendix so anyway they brought me into the operating theatre proper big operating theatre this was very old again loads of people in it all all the gear on all talking away and and then this surgeon came in and she was very nice and she says you okay she said i was all prepped to prep you with everything and she said we only need to do a local anesthetic and it's a minor puncture wound into it like microsurgery so that was okay so I'm lying there it was like having a baby a big sheet up in front of me and she's in underneath the front doing the operation and the next thing she come up and she says oh no big 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 problem with blood and fluid and all sorts and she says we're gonna have to properly knock you out and, and explore and I don't know what to give me but it was an injection I think it was in the spine anyway cut a long story short I'm making this a long story and I shouldn't but 
whenever I came round in this awful ward, there were about 50 old men and it all looked like I was there to die. No visitors, very dull and me and drips and things coming out of me and terribly thirsty. They wouldn't give me water before the operation and I was there over a day and terribly warm. There was no air conditioning and there had been a wee nurse there and she was great. She got me a big giant fan in the face which was brilliant but it dried, dried you up even more you know. So Eventually anyway the doctor came and or the surgeon came and she says you burst your appendix and you burst your gallbladder and you almost died and she said you shouldn't have been able to <laughs> be okay for like the time that you were okay 36 hours or something between the accident and the thing so I was very 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 lucky and it was I can't tell you when she when, when I realized that it was okay and I got out the other one how good I felt I was in excruciating not as much pain as I had been in once you've done the operation, but still a lot of pain, but I was able to gradually get myself sitting up and things like that. And this went on for a couple of days, and, and uh, then I eventually got myself out of bed. And I, well, there was a wee doorman in the place, or a janitor, or whatever he was, and I'd got to know him. And he would go out to 7 Eleven for me and bring me in whatever I wanted Coca Cola and whatever. So as I started to improve, I couldn't believe how good I felt. I went through the worst worst thing I've ever went, other than my mother dying, it was the worst thing I'd ever went through in my life. And I was afraid and I thought I was gonna die and with the thing that happened with hallucinating as well and just everything. And all of a sudden, once I started to recover, um, this is probably about day three, day four, I felt fantastic. Just fantastic. Just how lucky have I been? You know, in life things happen to people and there's guilt, survival guilt and all these things and I know the way I am as a person, I'm not like that. My brain went to how lucky are you to get through this? So it, was a, it turned out in the end, especially right up to now, to be a very positive thing, a positive experience if that makes any sense whatsoever. But I then started to think to myself, right, I've got, I think I've about four days left in Thailand. I, whenever I went to Thailand, the whole COVID thing had started and there had been lockdowns in some countries and I had decided to go because I didn't think anything would happen that fast. But I knew by the time that at four days to go to my flight home that they were then talking about lockdowns in the UK. So wee doctor that kept coming to me I started to ask him about it he says no 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 another week another week I says I can't stay awake if I stay oh my god I had something like 37 staples up here and another few staples across here and and, and still this thing coming out of me this hose with this taking bile out of me <laughs> terrible thing and um, so I panicked a wee bit about that about not getting home and with a day and a half to go the surgeon come and talked to me and she didn't, well no, the surgeon came and looked at me and she didn't really say very much and then she left and a while later he came in and he says, okay, we're going to discharge you, we're going to let you go. And I never felt as good and I was able to get out. I got an Uber from this town to my hotel and I had another day and a half to settle myself before I had to fly home. And it was just fantastic. I've done a wee video of myself. I'll not let you see it. It's a bit embarrassing. But I videoed myself before I was doing YouTube videos or anything, although this is only a couple of years ago, um, saying, remember how you feel at this moment. Remember for the rest of your life how lucky you have been. And remember, you're only on this earth for a small night, night of time, and I need to start doing the things I've planned to do. And just a great 24 hours and or 36 hours and whenever I got to the airport uh, I got into the airplane I was worried about because of the pain it wasn't like, like if, 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 if I if, whenever the accident happened and right up until the operation if that was a hundred percent pain I was now probably in about 10 to 15 percent pain but it was still pretty sore and I had all the stables and I was worried I wouldn't get through the x-ray machine and all sorts but when I got onto the plane this is just unbelievable and things like this have been happening to me ever since with luck.
so I got on, the plane was pretty full looking and it was a big long flight, it was to from Bangkok to Holland and I can't remember exactly how long that was as a single flight, but something like 9 hours and whenever I got to my row, nobody in it, 4 seats, a busy plane and I had the whole road to myself and I was able to lift all the arms and get blankets and I slept most of the way home and then whenever I got home my brother-in-law had left me a message saying lockdown starting tomorrow morning and he, he, said, he says go to Tesco's on your way home and he says but you won't get anything it's all sold out but I went to one out in the country and I got everything and then I heard that um, the flights had stopped so that all worked out really well for me my next worry was how am I going to survive I won't be able to go for work to work for a good while how am I going to survive financially and it was only like the day after I got home or something Boris announced all the help for self-employed people and all that stuff for everybody and that allowed me months and months and months to recuperate to plan to change my mindset and now I'm driving up a road in Spain on the way to look at golf resort apartments you know and whatever else comes and my mindset's completely changed I'm, I'm far more light-hearted now I've stopped worrying about loads of things and you, you, you only do that by continually reminding yourself to stop worrying about stupid things I've sort of, sort of stopped giving a sh about anything other than things you need to give a about like your friends and family and health things but if I notice myself in my head moaning about somebody or something I stop it I knock it in the head so anyway so there you go I thought I'd tell you the whole story I may never ever put this out in a video by the way I'll get back and listen to this and think ah that's too deep but I don't know maybe people want to hear things I have tons of stories and tons of things that have happened to me in my life and I wonder should I talk about them on my YouTube channel lots of experiences I've been all over the world I've worked in tall ships I've, and I've just had so many things good things exciting things happen to me anyway I've just come to a toll so I'm gonna leave it off there I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please 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 give it a thumbs up it really helps the channel love to hear your comments and I'd love you to subscribe but that's it for now so until next time bye for now